This is your host Danny and this is English Plus podcast. Would you like to know the meanings of the words apprehensive, concede, convene, cower, deliberate, ferocious, flabbergasted, peak, regal and scorch? And moreover, do you want to learn them in the context of an African folktale, the tale of Osebu's drum? If you're interested, if you want to learn some new words in the context of a very interesting African folktale, join me in this episode where we will talk about all that. Welcome to a new episode from English Plus podcast where you get to learn English, business, culture, literature and a lot more. Two things to remember that you will always find extra practice on our website englishpluspodcast.com and don't forget to support us on Patreon to help us keep our content free forever. And now this is your host Danny and let's enjoy a new episode from English Plus Podcast. So let's start with the folk tale, the tale of Osebu's drum. And then we will talk about the words that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. But remember, this episode word power is very special because I create a very special post for it. In the post you will find interactive activities, quizzes and PDF downloadable worksheets. You can find the link in the description. Take the link and go there and you will make the most of this episode. But with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's start talking about the tale of Osebu's drum, an African folktale. When Niame, the sky god's mother, died, he wanted her funeral to be one that would reflect the status of their family. He knew that the great drum of Osebu the leopard would make the ceremony truly regal. Osebu was the most powerful animal on earth. He would not willingly give up his great drum. Niame deliberated for a long time, but he could not imagine a way to get the drum. Niame convened a meeting of all the animals and announced that he needed the great drum of Osebu for his mother's funeral. The animals cowered at the thought of challenging Osebu. Finally, Elephant said he would try to get the drum, but he failed. Then Lion tried and failed. Antelope, Crocodile and Bear could not get the drum either. When Turtle said, I will get the drum, the other animals laughed hysterically. Turtle had a soft back and moved as slowly as he does today. However, he was not at all apprehensive about the challenge. So, moving very slowly, Turtle finally arrived at Leopard's home. Osebu called out, Have you come to try to steal my drum too? No, said Turtle. But all this talk of drums has piqued my curiosity. I came to see just how great your drum is. When Osebu showed Turtle his drum, Turtle conceded that it was indeed a great drum. Then he said, But Niame's drum is larger. It is so large he can crawl inside it. Osebu objected in a ferocious voice, claiming that his drum was certainly as large. To prove it, Osebu climbed inside. Once Osebu was inside the drum, Turtle plugged its opening. He then tied the drum to his back and slowly dragged it back to Niame. The animals were flabbergasted at Turtle's success. Turtle presented the drum to Niame with Osebu inside it. In exchange for his freedom, Osebu offered the drum to Niame as a gift. As he hurried away, Osebu stumbled into the sky god's fire and scorched himself in many places, leaving dark spots on his hide. As a reward, Niame offered Turtle anything he desired. Fearing the other animals, Turtle asked for a heart cover to protect his back. And to this day, the turtle always travels with a heart shell on its back. An interesting story, no? I mean, I know this kind of story is childish, you would think. But to be honest, I like those stories a lot. Because some of the simple morals we can get from these stories are true for everybody, even for adults. Some of the great morals ever came from stories like that. And it is nice from time to time to go back to those stories, go back to simplicity. When we were a lot more simple than we are today. 
let's now talk about the words. I hope you like the story, but here comes the real juicy part where we talk about the 10 words I promised. Apprehensive, concede, convene, cower, deliberate, ferocious, flabbergasted, peak, regal, and scorch. And we will start with our very first word, regal. R-E-G-A-L, regal. Now let's see how we used it in context. We said that when Niami, the sky god's mother, died, he wanted her funeral to be one that would reflect the status of their family. Niami is the sky god's after all, so he knew that he needed a great drum, and that great drum belonged to Osebo the leopard. And according to Niami, this drum would make the ceremony truly regal. What is the meaning of regal? R-E-G-A-L, regal. If you describe something as regal, you mean that it is suitable for a king or queen because it's very impressive or beautiful. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be used only for kings and queens, but it is fit for king and queen. It is regal, royal, majestic, kingly, queenly, noble, etc. So that was our first word. Now let's talk about the second word, deliberate. D-E-L-I-B-E-R-A-T-E, deliberate. Niame deliberated for a long time, but he could not imagine a way to get the drum. So that is how we use it in context. Niame deliberated. And by the way, here I am saying deliberate, not deliberate. Deliberate would be an adjective, like when we say a deliberate action. If you describe something as deliberate, that means you planned or decided to do it beforehand and so it happens on purpose rather than by chance. That is deliberate and that is a very common use of deliberate. But here we are using deliberate, the same word, but we use it as a verb. And when we use it as a verb, the stress changes and so the pronunciation changes as well. So Niame deliberated, not deliberated deliberated, Niame deliberated for a long time. And this doesn't have anything to do with doing something on purpose or whatever. That is something different. If you deliberate, you think about something carefully, especially before making a very important decision. And here, Niame did this. Niame deliberated for a long time because Osebo, as we will see in the story, is not an easygoing fella. He's going to need some convincing and he's not going to give up the drum willingly. So that's why Niame deliberated. He thought about it carefully for a long time because he wanted to make an important decision. So that was deliberate. And now let's move to the next word, convene. C-O-N-V-E-N-E, convene. Now let's see how we use that in context. Niame convened a meeting of all the animals and announced that he needed the great drum of Osebo for his mother's funeral. So first he deliberated, he thought about it for a long time obviously, and then he convened a meeting. What does it mean when you convene a meeting? If someone convenes a meeting or a conference, they arrange for it to take place. You can also say that people convene or that a meeting convenes. We can use that for people, for the person who calls for the meeting or for the meeting itself. So we can say the meeting convenes, people convene or someone convenes a meeting. All of these things, that means the same thing. They arrange the meeting. So Niyame arranged a meeting. He convened a meeting. And that brings us to the next word, cower. C-O-W-E-R, cower. Now, we said in our story that the animals cowered at the thought of challenging Osebo. As I told you before, Osebo was not that easy-going fellow. You cannot just go to Osebo and tell him, uh, well, could you please give me your drum because Niame wanted it? Well, if Niame thought it would be that easy, he would have gone to Osebo and asked for the drum. But he knew that it was not an easy task. That's why he convened the meeting. And that's why now the animals cowered at the thought of challenging Osebu. It was not an easy feat, so it was not easy for them to say, okay, I'll do it. They cowered. If you cower, you bend forward or downwards because you are very frightened. You cringe, you shrink, you tremble. That is when you cower. And the animals obviously cowered at the thought 
of challenging Osebu. They were afraid. So that was our word. Now for the next word, apprehensive, which is closely related to coward. But how do we spell this word? A-P-P-R-E-H-E-N-S-I-V-E. Apprehensive. So let's see how we used it in context. Now we said that many animals tried and failed. First elephant, then lion, antelope, crocodile, and bear. They all tried and failed, but not turtle. He was not at all apprehensive about the challenge. Well, that's just the opposite. I told you that apprehensive is closely related to cower, but here, turtle was not apprehensive at all. Now, someone who is apprehensive is afraid that something bad may happen, like anxious or concerned or worried. Now, turtle was not apprehensive at all. So that was our word. Now for the next word, peak. P-I-Q-U-E. Peak. Now, in our story, Turtle said to Osebu that all the stock of drums has piqued my curiosity. What does that mean? If something piques your interest or curiosity, it makes you interested or curious. It arouses, it excites your curiosity or your interest. And this peak, it's not pick, P-I-C-K. No, it's not pick your curiosity. We don't say that. We say peak your curiosity, P-I-Q-U-E. So that was peak. Now for our next word, concede, C-O-N-C-E-D-E. Now let's see how we use that in our story. We said when Osebu showed Turtle his drum, Turtle conceded that it was indeed a great drum. What does it mean when you concede? If you concede something, you admit, often unwillingly, that it is true or correct. Like you admit, or you accept, or you acknowledge. That's what happened. Turtle conceded. Yes, it was a great drum. But then, of course, he tricked Osebu. He was doing all that to trick Osebu, actually. So, that is the meaning of concede. Now, let's move to the next word, ferocious. F-E-R-O-C-I-O-U-S. Ferocious. Now, in our story, we said Osebu objected in a ferocious voice, claiming that his drum was certainly as large. So, what is the meaning of ferocious? Eh, it... Obviously, from the sound of it, or actually from the sound I'm making of it, doesn't mean that it is something cool. He was not cool about it. Ferocious. A ferocious animal, person, or action is very fierce and violent, so it was a violent voice. We use ferocious to talk about wars and arguments. We use it for conflict, and here we're talking about a lot of anger and violence. In our story, ferocious voice, that means fierce and violent. So that was the voice of Osebo when he objected, No, my drum is as large. I will prove it to you. So that is the meaning of ferocious. Now for the next word, flabbergasted. F-L-A-B-B-E-R-G-A-S-T-E-D. Flabbergasted. Now, of course, Turtle tricked Osebu. He made him crawl inside the drum. Then he plugged the opening of the drum and tied the drum on his back all the way back to Niami. And when the animals saw that, they were flabbergasted at Turtle's success. Nobody at all. Because remember, elephant tried, lion tried, bear tried, crocodile tried, and they all failed. But then Turtle, this weak animal, succeeded. They were flabbergasted. Now, if you say that you are flabbergasted, you are emphasizing that you are extremely surprised. That was how the animals felt. They were flabbergasted. They were extremely surprised, astonished, amazed, stunned. That is the meaning of flabbergasted. And now for our final word for today, and that is scorch. S-C-O-R-C-H. Scorch. Now, in the story, after Turtle presented the drum to Niame, etc., Osebu offered the drum in exchange for his freedom, and then he hurried away. On the way, Osebu stumbled into the sky god's fire and scorched himself in many places, leaving dark spots. And according to this folktale, that explains the dark spot on a leopard. 
because Osebo stumbled into the sky god's fire and scorched himself in many places, leaving dark spots on his hide. Now, what does that mean? To scorch something means to burn it slightly, to sear, to char, not to completely burn. Now, if something scorches or is scorched, it becomes marked or changes color because it is affected by too much heat or by a chemical. But it is not burned, I mean, like, gone. No, it is slightly burned, and it changes color because of this burn. And according to our story, that's what brought black spots to the leopard. Of course, this is a folktale, but it is nice how people used to explain things. And obviously, this story explains as well how Turtle got his hard shell on his back. So, that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you learned something new, especially new words from the words that I gave you. Let me remind you again what these words were. We learned apprehensive, concede, convene, cower, deliberate, ferocious, flabbergasted, peak, regal, and scorch. Don't forget that you can find a lot of activities on our website, englishpluspodcast.com. The link is in the description. Go to englishpluspodcast.com and the link is going to take you to the specific post we created for this episode. You will find the text, of course. You will find some exercises to practice before you can find interactive activities, PDF downloadable worksheet, and an interactive crossword puzzle. There is everything you need to learn and practice because you want to make these words part of your permanent vocabulary bank. And we're talking about the active vocabulary bank, the vocabulary bank you can use in writing and speaking. And one last thing before I leave you, if you like the content of English Plus and you would like to help us stay alive and keep producing these episodes every day, you can support us on Patreon. The link is also in the description of this episode. Go to Patreon, support English Plus because that is the only thing that can keep us going. As you can see, we have chosen not to add ads or premium episodes, but we need some support. So if you like English Plus, consider supporting us on Patreon. Now, with that being said, this is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.